So um, when, when you get new clients, like what's the process of like, you know, the first initial phase, like the first face to face and then kind of like expectations and, and goals for them. So before I get on the discovery call, I have two questions I ask. Um, so before you come a client, like we have to talk, it's a free discovery call. You know, we got to get face to face, make sure we're on the same page, make sure I'm a good fit for you. I'm, I can help you. Um, yep. obviously. So then there's two questions I ask them before I get on the discovery call. And that is what is like the, the primary thing or the most important thing that you want to change or help yourself with, like whatever that may be, whatever realm or area of life it is. And yep. then the second question or the follow-up question is what happens if this doesn't change? Right. So then I hop on the call. Cool. Whatever their answer is. Awesome. Thanks for the explanation. We'll hop on a call. And then it's really, I just explain that everything we do, a lot of people, well, life coaching itself is a fairly new term, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. We've had it for 15 plus years, but it's, fairly new and it is growing like rapidly the different and a lot of people now are relating it to therapy um i'm not a therapist by any means um the, the biggest difference is like therapists try to or more so focused on your past traumas you know to kind of help you relive it let it go however you want to cope with it whereas life coaches are we see it more as what can i do now mm -hmm. to help me in the future um, and I have, I'm a firm believer that focusing on the past and trying to just relive things is not helpful for you going forward. Um, it's like, what can I do now? Because who you are and what you've done in the past, like you cannot change that. Like, sure. There's definitely like, I agree like there's some, some things that will like help you. If you relive that, you can kind of be like, okay, cool. I can let it go now, but like, what can I do now? So that way, you know, my 85 year old self is proud of me later. Um, so really life coaching is focusing on the now. So that way we can make today, tomorrow, next week, next year, the best it can be. Yeah. And I think that's way, like way better than just re like reliving the past. So, cause like you, you could start like, you know, working on the now and then be like, okay, like I need to work on, the, I need to change this instead of, you know, that. And so, and it could be like real, real quick compared to like, you know, reliving the past, just constantly thinking it over and over and over instead of, you know, looking in the future and be like, I want to get here. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like focusing on the past is very emotionally draining. Mm -hmm. um, it brings up negative and unwanted emotions. And again, like that's fine. But what can we do now in the present to like not be those emotions? Just because you feel those emotions doesn't mean you have to like be them moving forward. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's really just disconnecting from those and learning that like that is in your control, regardless of whether you know that or want to believe that or not. Like you, mm -hmm. it is in your control to completely change. It doesn't matter how old you are you can change anything you want like today so yeah exactly yeah, yeah. And, and how many clients do you have right now and how many clients are you kind of like tapped out at that you want to get to i don't think i've tapped out yet um right now i have seven i think the most i've had at once is nine um but i, I haven't tapped out okay no and i think that's more i haven't got to that point yet where i'm like i need to create a wait list. Um, I think it's also, it's a very, it's also a very patient journey. You don't get clients and stuff every day. So it's um, really, I probably need to step up my marketing game and my content game. Cause I, I do realize I put numbers together, like about every two posts I make about it, I get a, a, a discovery call is what I've come to conclusion with. And I'm closing about 70 per, I'm doing really good on closing my discovery calls. We'll say that. That's awesome. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not like, because everything I'm doing is organic. I'm like, and I'm not like completely confident in it. Like I kind of like definitely procrastinate a little bit. Um, so that's more so on me. Maybe I need a market. Maybe I need to start doing some paid ads, something. I don't know. It's a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of stuff, but yes, I'm not tapped out yet. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. And, uh, and typically like, is, is it, do you do so? So I, I have one, I have one client right now. That's not like, not a life coach or anything like that. It's just like a, a diabetic that's kind of, you know, manage their blood sugars like during workouts or like, you know, and just, I'm trying to help them out, like finding ways to, you know, keep their blood sugar at like a normal level. So with you and I, I have like for three months as of, as of right now, because, you know, we just, I just want to test, we're just testing the waters. So 
is it like a, a month to month contract for you or, or is it like a set like since six months goal or when you do like the when they would do want to sign up you they say you say like okay i may have you may have like i think you could hit this within like three months so how does how does the like you know the length of the of the you know working with the client work for you the minimum is eight weeks okay um, and it goes up from there the package the package options go up from there but the minimum is eight weeks because most of I mean, not even most, 100% of people, if like, they're not coming to me when they're 10, you know, like you've been this way for decades. You're not changing overnight. It's just like, I, I always like to relate it because it's the easiest way. It's like, you're not losing your 20 pounds overnight, right? It's a process. So like the very minimum I will allow my clients is eight weeks because, and that's like, we'll just barely touch on like the foundation of like what it takes, right? Yeah. You've been this way forever. It's, it's not going to change overnight. So it's really like the first eight weeks is like just deep diving into why, why do you think the way you think, yeah. why are you doing what you're doing? Right. And then once you can really figure that out and define that for yourself, then we'll start putting like some action and some steps into place. So that way you can create the habit to make it change in the future. Yeah. Now, since you have all these clients and kind of working on their schedule and managing them, how do you balance, you know, working on yourself as well with, as well as like working with the clients. Crazy enough, this whole process for me has got me to wake up. I do not sleep in past five anymore. <laughs> okay. That's crazy. I am up between four and five every single day. Like before my alarm, I'm like out of bed and I'm doing my, my sales stuff. Like I, I answer questions for myself every single morning. I have this huge log that goes on and I answer very specific questions <laughs> every single day. I'll, I'll read or write. And then, um, yeah, I have a good morning routine where I'm, I'm working on myself first before I even start the day. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's I, I do that too. Cause I wake up at like four, four, uh, four o'clock in the morning work out, And then like, I'll get home around like six 30 and get the kids ready. But sometimes like, you know, during the summertime when they're not in school, I'll focus on myself and like, you know, get some work done with like the YouTube channel, you know, posting or, or whatever, just to kind of get myself situated so I can actually be more try to try to be more present with my kids and my wife, you know, throughout the day, even though like, you know, the cell phone is just one thing that just like kills me every single time. Cause like, if I get bored or sit down, I'm like flipping the phone, just like checking on social media. And I'm like, I should really, you know, really get to the point of like not doing that. Cause like my, my son's telling my wife, like, Hey, dad's on the, on his phone, like all the time. And it's just like, God, I, I got, I got to get off of this. The kid's ratting you out. Huh? It's that bad. <laughs> oh, all the time. He rats me out on everything, everything. Cause obviously, you know, you, you know, you know who he likes better, obviously okay. my, the, the mom. So everyone likes mom first. So, oh yeah. So yeah, it's like, I get ratted out every single time for like the littlest things. That's what I I, I realize that too. I, I I catch myself in, I've gotten a lot better at it. I've put the limit on it. Um, like I said, I only have Instagram on my phone, but I've, I've set a limit to where like when that limit pops up, it's like, oh, your limit's done for the day. I'm like, oh shit, I've been on my phone for, I've been here for, I actually, it's funny you say that. I, it was set at um, 45 minutes. I just, I did like a whole time audit of myself and it's for content. So it's, it's actually crazy timing that we're talking about this. It's, um, I did a whole time audit and people say, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. It's like, okay. Like I, I lie to myself and say, I don't have time or I'm just overthinking my content, whatever it is, but it's not that you don't have time. It's that you're doing something else instead of that. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I set my, my screen time for Instagram is 45 minutes a day. And I just dropped it last night to 30 minutes. So it's like, okay, there's 15 minutes where I can sit and get some content done. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I can just write it out. I can get a lot done in 15 minutes, you know? So it's not too, it's not saying you don't have time because you're just doing something else instead of whatever it is you're, you want to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, I, I need to start doing that. I need to start setting time limits. It's like, it's, it, it got to the point where my wife got me a timer for the bathroom. Cause I'm on oh, my seriously? phone. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like literally like, um, it's like one of those like sand dials, but it's like yeah. a guy, it's like you flip it over and it's a guy sitting on the toilet, like on his phone. And it's like a five minute time limit. Like that's it. And oh she's my like, God. Yeah. And it's, it's like, I, I'm like, she's like, is, is it, is it time yet? And I'm like, I look at the thing and I'm like, I didn't put it on. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so, but I was like, I, I'm trying to be more present on like, you know, 
throwing my phone on the bed or on the couch, you know, instead of getting like completely distracted. Cause, because, you know, I'm, I'm not making excuses, but like sometimes like, you know, you do want some alone time, especially with like two kids that are like under, under nine. And it's just like, you know, they're on you all the time and like, they want you to do stuff. And then it's like, all right, just give me a break. And so like that, that that's kind of like my break, but it's not really the best break to do. Yeah, yeah.